Weather went to shit today, we got tons of fog on the range, not a lot of shooting possible right now, but why not to use this time and to talk about the 4x4 scopes so from the rifles, commonly used on the rifles like SVD, NDM, PSL, Zastavas, and uh, absolutely almost anything in a 7.62x54R. Uh, these scopes do future very interesting reticle. PSO1, uh, which was developed in the early 60s by Russians, and it is used all around the world to this day. And uh, it is a very effective reticle and very simple but effective type of the scope. As you can see, this is the a little bit different variant uh, between these two. This one is made in uh, Russia, this one is made in Serbia. If my memory serves well, uh, you, you got them made in Belarus and things like this. So they come uh, in a little bit different breeds, also in China. Uh, but they come in different breeds and uh, favors, but their common theme is uh, these are all scopes designed for a basically a DMR sniper type rifles comb block sniper type rifles and as I said they are used uh, all across the world now when looking at that scope and looking through the scope uh, over the reticle you have to start thinking totally in the metric system the scope was designed to use the metric system it is like pre-calibrated for the metric system and it should be zeroed from uh, 100 meters so what uh, we will do first we'll talk about what is happening on the scope as you can see how as with the western scopes we have uh, two turrets it's elevation turret and then we do have a windage turret and the turret uh, is made of two pieces i'll call this scale turret and then that black thing on this scope uh, will be more for like physically moving the reticle inside the scope, which I will explain a little bit later. Uh, but by moving the turrets right like this, when the two silver screws are connected or tied, not connected, but tied to the turret, what is happening, uh, you basically clicking the clicks hearing the clicks and the mechanism inside the gears are uh, engaged and uh, you will be making the adjustments uh, based of those toolets uh, by turning them up or down uh, and up on the elevation turret, turret if it's not marked in English language uh, it will be basically a clockwise movement and down will be counterclockwise uh, movement and for the left you're going to have counterclockwise movement on the windage turret and the clockwise movement on the uh, windage turret uh, as well so something to keep in mind but how to zero those scopes you have to be at 100 uh, meters you could do some little math and cheating from different distances and 100 meters is basically 110 yards but i strongly suggest to be at the 100 meters uh, if you are not on target on paper when you zero it uh, from that scope uh, there is a little cheat way how we can use uh, to get you quickly on that uh, target you basically we cannot shotgun it that type of the rifle right so there's no way like with m 110s we can shotgun it look through the board and then look through the scope and more or less uh, you can adjust the scope to be on the on the target here you don't have that view for the board of course but i'm assuming your iron sights are adjusted and, and you zero the iron sights if you didn't I strongly suggest to watch one of the earlier videos how to adjust the iron sights on the AK type rifles is the same procedure basically assuming that you have iron sights adjusted uh, if you are at the 100 meters put them at the 100 meters mark and look with scope mounted on the rifle this was done on purpose that scope sits higher so you have a view for the iron sights so you can lock the rifle on the target with your support bags and then aim it and then look through the scope 
with the 100 meters setting. If you're doing this from the 50 meters too, that's fine. Just move it, uh, the hash marks, either halfway between zero and one or to zero, either way will work. It will get you on target, more or less. So as I said, one more time, you will look through the iron sights, you will align them, lock them with your support back and look through the scope. Are you on target? If not, adjust the turrets and move the reticle to target. Now, when you will fire at the 100 meters target, you will be on that uh, target as long as you did semi-decent job with uh, your iron sights. Now, what to do if you don't have the iron sights zeroed and you're completely out of whack, nothing lines up. Uh, what I do very often then, I go to the 25 meters and uh, aim from 25 meters at the target and based on the bullet impact, I adjust the turrets and I go back to 50, check it out again and then I go back to 100 and I should be on target. So there is always a, a way around the issue, right? And um, that's if you got everything completely uh, misaligned and not, um, not you're completely out of target, you cannot spot your hits or anything like that. So now with being on target, you wanna be as precise as possible right now. I would shoot a five shots group, not three shots, five shot group and do the adjustments, fine adjustments on the turrets and see how close you are to your point of aim with your point of impact. If you will run out of elevation adjustments or windage adjustments on the turrets, you have to unscrew those two silver screws. There are the same screws on the windage turret and the same screws on the elevation turret. You have to uh, make them loose, basically three to four turns. You don't have to remove them. Uh, there's in every manual I, I read, they say do not remove those screws. I remove them, put them back, nothing happened, okay? And, and the system is still working. But in the manuals they're saying do not remove them by any, any means. Make them loose and then you can rotate the upper portion, in my case a black disc, but there are some scopes where that disc is still silver, but it's separated piece from the lower turret. And this will move the reticle inside the scope. Or you can hold it and zero the turrets by holding the upper piece and basically twisting this to the middle of the scale or coming back to the middle of the scale, all right? And this will allow you and give you more adjustments on the turret. After zeroing the bottom turret, then you have to, uh, of course, adjust, not adjust, but tighten those two little silver screws so everything uh, stays uh, put in the position. And if you have to make more adjustments, again, use the clicks on the turrets and uh, try to move the point of impact so it matches as closely as possible to the point of aim. Each click on the elevation or windage turret will shift the point of impact by five centimeters or roughly half mil. So each click will shift the point of impact by five centimeters of half or half mil from 100 meters. So that those who are familiar with mills, you, you should start getting a picture. So that's how you adjust those turrets. After you done, you put them, you want to be of course at uh, 100 meters setting for the elevation turret at zero for the adjustment. So again, you will loosen up two silver screw, screws and you will, by holding the upper portion of the turret as tight as possible, you will rotate the bottom turrets to the desired position from whatever distance you are, you are zeroing it uh, out. All right, so this will take care of zeroing from 100 uh, meters. Now let's talk a little bit about the reticle. 
in the center of the reticle you do have the aiming uh, chevron right of course when you will be aiming you want the target to be on the tip of the chevron unless you using the windage corrections or you shooting at the moving target as you can see in the reticle on the left and right side in the middle you do have a scale going all the way to setting 10 on the left and 10 on the right each hash mark corresponds to one mil one mil adjustment to the left one mil adjustment to the right all the way to the 10 mils now one mil at 100 meters quick math 10 centimeters change in the bullet uh, impact on target it's easier to think for us in mils because you can quickly call off the wind left one mil and you will make the adjustments for the wind that way right without dialing the turret so you can just keep moving the reticle and uh, do it that way now you also have a built-in range finder to the pso one reticle and most common uh, setting is you will see on the left side 1.7 or 1.7 because uh, the the using commas so but it means 1.7 meters this is how tall tall target should be for you to precisely uh, not precisely but to estimate the range so what is that telling you that 1.7 meters this is the height of the target which has to be fit between those lines running on the left side of the reticle to estimate the range on some of them i have seen 1.75 i have seen 1.8 like that scope has 1.8 either way it is the height of the target target you are ranging to so that's the information if you know that something is let's say 1.7 meters and you will fit between the lines it will give you the distance to it why 1.7 1.8 this is where these people who are etching those reticles are playing with the dimensions of average or human and this is measured of course one more time we're measuring from the bottom of the feet to the top of the head that's the average what they came up with and some people may, may argue it's not really that precise that's fine i'm just telling you what is etched to the reticle they are also hunting versions so-called hunting versions with 1.5 meter mark before uh, or around the range finder and this is supposedly for ranging a deer but of course the deer deer comes in the different sizes as well so don't think what this was designed and don't think what is designed for just think about it. if you got the target if you know your dimensions for the target and the target ha has 1.7 meters or 1.8 meters dimensions you can fit it to the lines and you can get the ranging distance uh, to it all right in the center of the reticle we have uh, more chevrons too and those are you guess correctly basically a bullet drop uh, compensators without dialing the turret or if you will dial in and you can still you need more elevation you can use those too uh, i did some reverse math and i will use my cheat sheet the first chevron under the main chevron i clock it at around 3.4 mils so it is a 3.4 mils drop the third chevron from the top i clocked at seven mils so huge gap right right there and finally the very bottom one i measure it at around 11 and a point five mils now i will tell you based on the ballistics of the 7.62 by 54r that second chevron from the top will line up roughly with uh, the target at 500 yards so if you want to do the quick uh, shot at the 500 yards that you can use that uh, second chevron and it should line up with 7.62 by 54r otherwise you will be dialing the elevation uh, if you don't want to use those chevrons and like seven mils that's a huge huge uh, bullet drop compensator so i wouldn't use that uh, the second chevron yeah it's it's doable but for anything else you will be dialing the elevation on the turrets and these marks 
corresponding marks, one, two, three, four, five, and so on, they are in meters, not yards, meters. So if you do have a target, uh, again, let's go back to that 500 yards. So probably you have to be at the 450 yards to roughly hit that target. So you will push to four and then one click past, which is half mark between four and five and i'll be at 450 and i'll shoot it that way uh, other than this as i said the windage if you want to dial windage i will strongly advise to not do that because wind is changing unless in your some really steady wind environment and you always have the same wind coming your way then you probably can do that but other than this that's why we have those uh, one mil hash marks on the left and on the right in the center of the reticle for the quick wind corrections and if you're using a spotter spotter always should be calling out the wind for you starting with the direction which way you should go and the value for the wind that's pretty much it uh, also i forgot to tell you quickly on those scopes you do have the illumination and this is the on basically on off switch different scopes run on different batteries uh, this one is with double a's uh, this one is using some uh, other batteries i don't remember the value so you have to check and see what comes to the compartment uh, but it is basically on off illumination you don't have you do not have the adjustment for the brightness of the illumination it either works or it doesn't and it is not very bright it was made for the twilight conditions uh, and uh, I'm strongly advocating always during the daylight you really shouldn't be using illumination I know people like that and everything but uh, illumination is unnecessary in the daylight uh, settings uh, on those scopes too like on that one you do have basically adjustable not adjustable but either on or off shade and uh, the way how you engage the shade is there is a, like little locking screw you don't have to touch that screw or do anything that screw stays always in the same position but you basically have to pull it twist it and you will push now the shade down and to lock it in position you see the cutout slots here and there for that's for extended position that's for retracted position and you will rotate it to lock it and there you go and the shade is locked in position right now and the scope shrinked in size magically extremely simple solution uh, nothing nothing to it now we do have rubber eyepiece rubber or silicone ones depends on the model uh, what you had that's kind of neat you can put your eye to it uh, looks a little bit dummy but it works it helps to uh, you know put the shade uh, around your eye and shield you from the sun rays and things like this when you're looking through the scope now it's not really user friendly for the quick engagements and things like this i'll tell you this right away so i i often see people taking this off so it's up to you uh, one thing which i forgot to say at the beginning is of course the locking mechanism in order to be successful with those types of the scopes you have to have that scope sit tight on the side row if the scope will be moving around when you're zeroing and shooting you're not going to be successful period it's not that hard to adjust that tension you just got you have to basically push this away and there is a tensioning knot uh, or it depends on the models but mostly it's a tensioning knot and if you will screw in you will increase the tension if you will screw it out you will, you will release the tension and that's how you're getting this to sit tight on the rail and then you're closing the lever always make sure the lever is closed and when you're closing the lever it should be a really like nice tension on closing the lever and lock it in position like this and you will be good to go all right 
I think that pretty much covers everything uh, about those scopes. If you have any questions, I'll be watching that video uh, for the next uh, 24 to 48 hours and try to answer it. Uh, then if you got uh, the, you know more detailed questions, you can always message me and I'll try to help you out. Thanks for watching.